Today in this video, I'm doing a quick experiment to test the accuracy of my Hydrofarm PAR meter. Uh, this PAR meter is probably one of the cheapest ones you can get, although this was about 140 bucks when I got it and where I got it from. If you compare it to something like an Apogee, you're going to spend you know over 500 bucks, and an Apogee, depending on the model you get, is going to be tuned for LED grow lights and more specifically the red-blue LED grow lights. But in this video, what I'm going to do is test if this can be trusted when you're com when you're comparing it to a white LED versus a red blue LED. Now both of these LED lights are Sansi. If you're interested in these, uh, there'll be a link below. I also did review videos for these lights, um, but that's not what this video is about. I chose these lights because both of these lights are using the exact same LEDs and the same amount of LEDs. Uh, and by that I mean the same brand off the same shelf. I use my watt meter to make sure that both of these lights are pulling exactly 15 watts, and they are. And I want to talk a little bit about the LEDs here, specifically what a white LED light is. This one here is the red-blue, this is the white. Now, there's no such thing as a white diode. Uh, when you make a white LED, to make it white, you're actually using blue LEDs, and there's a, uh, a phosphor coating, in this case it looks yellow. Um, but there's a phosphor coating over the blue diode, and that phosphor coating fluoresces, making the, white, making the light white. This red-blue LED is a, also a phosphor coated, and it's also a blue LED, which is covered in this uh, orangish-red phosphor coating, and that's how it fluoresces red. So you're actually getting blue and red light from this, and you're getting white light from this. Now, a... If you want to technically define what a white LED is, a white LED is technically a fluorescent light. Now I know what you're thinking, you know, how could it be a fluorescent light? It's a fluorescent, fluorescent lights are tubes, they're gas filled and, you know, they're far different from what an LED is. Okay, that's, that's true. Physically they are different, but the way that they function, the reason why a fluorescent light is called a fluorescent light is because there is a um, there's a basically electrons that are excited in the tube and there's a phosphor coating on the inside of a fluorescent tube and that fluoresces. So the light actually that's inside the tube, you really can't see much at all. It's a, it's a UV kind of a light. And that's basically what an LED is. It's using a blue diode, which is uh, almost in the UV range and it causes the phosphor to fluoresce. It's the exact same principle as a fluorescent tube light. It's made out of glass and it's hollow and has gas filled. So there's a little background on what a white LED is. So now you understand that a uh, both of these are using the exact same diodes. There's the only difference is, is the phosphor coating. And that's the reason why I chose these for this video is because it's the same diode, the same amount of power going into it. And the only difference is this one has all the colors of the rainbow and this just has red and blue. And the red light is... Uh, is a broader band because of the phosphor coating. It's not, it's not coming off in a single wavelength. It's coming off in a broader spectrum, in the red part of the spectrum. But the blue part of it is pretty much a single wavelength. So now what we're gonna do is put these in a light holder and we're gonna use the PAR meter to test the difference at the same height. Okay, so now I got the white Sansi light in here. And if you look in the meter, it's gonna be jumping around a little bit because it is not calibrated for LEDs, and usually LED lights are uh, pulse width modulated, so it's constantly changing its brightness at a rate that which you can't see. But if you look at this, we're ranging anywhere from about 300 to 325. So now we're gonna put the other light in here, the red-blue light, and see what happens. Okay, now I got the red-blue LED in there, or as some people call them, blurple lights. And you can see the reading on the PAR meter is basically about the same. It's ranging anywhere from 300 to about 325. Um, and it keeps changing, you know, and obviously you just kind of have to take the average between those. But just wanted to show that, you know, these cheap meters, yeah, they're not going to be perfectly accurate, and there's going to be some situations where you're not going to be able to trust what the number says. However, if I'm comparing two different grow lights for a, uh, an experiment, if I'm comparing a white LED to a red-blue LED, and which is what I do in a lot of uh, my videos for growing plants, 
Um, as long as the meter is telling me that the number is the same for both of them, then I can trust that the what the plants are receiving at the plant canopy uh, is the same for both lights. Now, the number you see on the screen, yeah, it may not be the actual PAR output uh, because it is LED and because it's a red-blue or because it's a white, it, it doesn't really matter. As long as that's the same reading for both, as you can see here, it's the same wattage, the same height, and the same position on there. And the number is almost identical between these two lights. So as long as that reading is the same for both, then I can trust that the experiments that I'm doing are um, pretty valid, I would say. So I just wanted to make that because I've been uh, I've had some comments on the meter I've used, and I wanted to show that it does work uh, well enough for what we're doing here. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.